Hello. Today we're going to talk about how you can use requires to create more manageable scripts. So here I am looking at a standard web page. There's not really any PHP on it, right? This is just an index page. So here's the top of my HTML. I've got an embedded CSS sheet. Um, you can see the head runs for 104 lines. Then I open up my body, then I open up a div. Here's a nav bar. I've tried to put comments in here to make things clear. Here's another div. And then the content of that page, really the unique content, spans from here to here, right? And everything else is just, you know, it's kind of just overhead and it's contained in divs. Let me show you what the actual page looks like so you can better understand it. So here's a page. You can imagine this potentially being the home page of a website. And here's the nav bar. And so on every one of these pages, they probably all would have the same background. They all would have the same div structure. They all would have the same nav bar. The only thing that's actually unique to this page is the content of this div, right? It's the stuff underneath the nav bar down to the bottom of this, this div. But the entire website, if you will, every one of these pages probably has the same layout. So what we're going to do is we're going to use requires to take out the common elements of this page and uh, and so we're gonna what we're gonna get two things that are gonna happen from that. One is that this page is gonna no longer be 141 lines. Let's see see how small we can get it. Cause small's good, right? When you're editing a web page, why would you want to look at 100 more lines of code than you have to look at? And the other advantage is that it'll allow us to create an easier to maintain structure, easier to maintain, easier to edit. So here's the principle. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this page into four pieces, if you will. There's going to be the content, there's going to be the top, the bottom, and the nav bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally go to the first character of the document, doing a big select. All right, so I'm grabbing the CSS, I'm grabbing from head to head tag. Now, it's up to you where you want to stop, but I'm going to grab the opening body tag, I'm going to grab the opening container, and I'm going to go that far. Because the nav bar is kind of a thing of its own. And one of my highest recommendations is that you definitely use a require for the nav bar. So I'm going to take all that stuff. First 107 lines. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to file, save as, and I'm going to call that head.html. If there was PHP, you might want to call it PHP. It doesn't really matter. So notice that this file is now 104 lines shorter, and I'm going to use a PHP require to kind of import that. So literally just keyword require, and that is called head.html. And so now notice that this, this page here is 100 lines smaller than it was a minute ago, and that's just a lot easier to manage. Right? When you edit this page, you're not going to be editing this head part. I mean, unless you are, if that if you do want to work on the CSS and you do want to add some metadata, then yeah, open up the head part. But if all you want to do is add some content to this page, which is what you're going to be doing more often than not, well, that became an easier task. Let me save this and show you what it looks like. All right, I refresh this page and it's exactly the same. If I go and view the page source, it's exactly the same, right? There's all that head information. There's nothing left behind. But me as a developer, I just got a product which is a lot easier to look at. So the next part I like to do definitely is I'm going to rip out that nav bar as well. So if I want to rip out that nav bar and put that into a require, I'm going to select it. I'm going to cut it, create a new document, paste it, file save as, and I'm going to call it nav.html. And I save it. And I want to replace what was there, I'm going to put it up in this block just to make my life a little bit easier. So I'll say require nav.html and I'll, I'll save and we'll refresh and right, same product, right? I'm not losing anything. The user doesn't know what's going on, but now remember when this was a hundred and I don't know, 141 lines a minute ago. Now I don't even need a scroll bar, right? So if I want to edit this, this is just becoming the content of the page. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the bottom too. Now I don't have a lot going on, but sometimes a web page will have like a pretty elaborate footer or something like that. Um, so just to be consistent here, I'm going to, I'm going to grab that part and call that the footer. It's all kind of arbitrary. But uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm deciding to grab that. So I'm going to cut that, create a new page, paste that, call it uh, file save as. I'm going to call this foot.php. Oops, you could call it PHP. 
I don't know why I actually care to call it HTML. I guess because it doesn't have any PHP in it, but you're allowed to write straight HTML in a PHP uh, script. So I need to do a little require down here. Require foot.html. And if I refresh, you'll see the finished product here. Now I'm not getting a lot of mileage out of, uh, out of that foot that I just put in here. You might be wondering, was that even worth doing? Because I kind of traded three lines for three lines. But, but what I've really done here is what I've done is I've separated out. And so now this page, it's just three requires. And it's this part here, which is this is the page. Everything else is related to the structure and the presentation of the page. But what I've done is I've taken what's all, you know, all I'm left with here is the content of the page. So now if I need to make changes to the content of that page, I just edit this. And it's quite simple, right? I'm looking at 23 lines. And, and frankly, I could get rid of a lot of white space here if I wanted to. But I, I do leave it in just for uh, simplicity's sake. Now, the other kind of nice uh, advantage here is that my footer is pretty simple, right? If I want to go do something like... Uh, Add a, add a footer to this. I don't know if my cursor wasn't where I thought it was. Then I can add a footer to this. And so I add one footer. And if I use requires on all my pages, now, I've, now what I've done is I've added a footer to that page. I'll show you. It's not going to be very pretty. It's that thing. But I've added a footer to every other page, right? If you're wondering why that looks weird, well, it's because I didn't style it worth anything. But what I wanted to show you is, is now when I do work on one of these pieces of my structure, I'm, I'm working on every part of my website. Now, one of the biggest things that I'm trying to sell you on here is even if you don't want to utilize these principles in your, in your development, you should at least pull out the nav bar. Because if you have made websites before, one of the things that I run into probably as much as anything else is sometimes you add things to your nav bar, you remove things from your nav bar. And given that your nav bar is just this piece, which is identical on every page of your site, when you make a change in one place, you need to make a change in every other page on your site. And it's super annoying and hard to keep track of. But if you use a require and you want to make a chance, like, I don't know, maybe I decide that log out needs to be two words. But the worst thing that you can do is make that change on half the pages on your site, because then it gets inconsistent and it looks strange. But if you use just quite simply one of those scripts like that, it's going to take effect here and on every other page in my site. So this process of creating requires and using requires, it allows you to isolate the content of your page, make it easier to present. Um, and it also allows you to create like these easier modules to edit as well. So a lot of benefit to doing this. It always seems forced when you first start doing it, but uh, when you get a good feel for you know what what should be in a require, what shouldn't be in a require, it's going to make your job as a developer a little bit easier. Uh, not to mention this is also the idea behind MVC, which you kind of need to understand how the uh, different parts of of web pages interact and what's presentation and what's the logic and right where's where's the back end stuff happening so anytime you're you're thinking about a page in terms of of uh, what is the function as opposed to just some giant sprawling script that goes on for a thousand lines uh, you're you're doing a you're doing a good job of thinking about how how to better organize things so i hope this makes sense in helping you create more efficient scripts and less redundancy in, in your work that you're doing